I want to tell you about a spectacular dining experience. It's Ports of Call Waterfront Dining, award-winning service and cuisine with a view of the dynamic L.A. Harbor from every seat. Enjoy daily sunset specials as well as the South Bay's best champagne brunch. The outdoor harborside patio is a perfect setting for happy hour every weekday from 3 to 8. Ports of Call Waterfront Dining. For reservations and directions, visit portsofcalldining.com or call 310-833-3553. Hi everyone, uh, it's Bill Ward here. Uh, welcome to Rock 50. I'm here with my host, Mike Stark. How you doing, Mike? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, everything okay? All's well. Okay, good. Uh, we're ready for a good rock show today. We've got to hope everybody out there that's checking us out right now is uh, in good spirits. Uh, we're hoping to bring you a really good show today. Uh, lots of uh, metal, and uh, we've got a, a great, uh, a great uh, drummer, a drum segue today. It's Neil Pert from Rush. Uh, Neil Alwood Pert, um, born September the 12th, 1952, in a Canadian-American musician uh, and author. He's the drummer and lyricist for the rock band Rush. Uh, Pert has received numerous awards for his musical performances, including induction into the Modern Drummer Hall of Fame in 1983, and is known for his technical proficiency and stamina. Pert grew up in Port... Dalhousie, Ontario, now part of St. Catherine's. During adolescence, he floated between regional bands in pursuit of a career as a full-time drummer. After a discouraging stunt in England he, uh, to concentrate on his music, Pert returned home, where he joined a local Toronto band, Rush, in the summer of 1974. And, and I think that's all I need to say. Um, we, I had to laugh because um, when Lisa, uh, I said, well, look, we need, we need Neil's bio. <laughs> okay. And I have to say this because second to none, the only other bio that's come in <laughs> that's as thick as Neil's was actually Gene Hogland's. Gene Hogland's got an amazing discography. But uh, I laughed my ass off because I got 10 pages come through the fax machine of bio <laughs> about Neil's accomplishments. And the truth is, we we just get little words. All we have to do is listen to him and uh, and listen to all his um, all his marvelous techniques. Uh, um, just a couple of things. I'll just just for my own self. Um, he's he's an absolute must for the students. If uh, you know, if there's a young students uh, who want to say, well, who, who shall we listen to? You know, where can we find guidance? Then I would always recommend go and listen to Neil Pert. You know, and um, He's, uh, I lo- I, what I like about him is, is, is uh, I like the way that he, he pushes his crescendos with his lyric, with the lyric. Um, he makes the lyric even more than what the lyric is. He's marvellous at that. And that's almost like an orchestrational or is an orchestrational movement. Um, in addition to that, he's a, a wonderful jazz player. And uh, in my opinion, and, and I don't know how he feels about that, right? I, I, I just love his, his, his playing and uh, his technique. Uh, we're going to have some great, with the songs today, we're going to hear some great examples of his timekeeping. Uh, one of the ones that I, one of the songs that we're going to be playing is La Villa uh, Strangiato, and I can't say it, but everybody else probably knows what it is as well. So do you know how to pronounce that? I think you nailed it, actually. I did? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, hmm. All right, well, anyway, on that you'll hear a great example of, of uh, timekeeping on the hat and, uh, and across the snare, and it's just, uh, it's just absolutely spot on, you know. So there's some great examples of drumming that we're going to be listening to today. Um, let's see. I think, uh, I think he's, the most, he's one of the most incredible drummers I've ever heard in my life. Uh, beautiful man, uh, beautiful, from a beautiful band, uh, Let's just hear the records, yeah? Okay. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Fucking wow. The, uh, for those of you who are listening today, you've just heard uh, just an absolutely outrageous set of brilliant music uh, featuring drummer Neil Peart. That was the band Rush. It's hard to um, play Rush music and not mention the brilliance of Alex and it was an incredible guitar player, and also, of course, Geddy, um, lyricist, uh, um, singer, bass player, and uh, keyboard player, and 
They're just so talented. Um, I think that uh, we just heard some of the uh, most uh, progressive um, drumming that uh, we could uh, wish to hear. I, you know, I, I don't know. What did you like? Well, I saw you rocking oh, out. Are you kidding me? Come on. I saw you rocking <laughs> out, man. So, do you like it? Yeah. I know you're a big Rush fan. I know. How many times have you seen them now? I, I've had to have seen them eight or nine times. Eight or nine yeah. times, yeah. yeah. Just for the record, for those of you who like finite little things, um, there was actually 16 pages of bio, not 10, uh, that, we, uh, that I thought we had originally. 16 pages on, on Neil. And uh, three of those, I think one of those, three, two of those pages were like accolades, <laughs> of, of all the Hall of Fame things and, you know, awards and things like that. So um, let me go over what we played, okay, for those of you who didn't know what we played. We played uh, Subdivisions, Fly By Night, La Villa, Strangiato, uh, Free Will, Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, Carve Away the Stone. I really like Carve Away the Stone um, in, the, in, its, in its intent lyrically as well. I think that it's, that's a really uh, nice uh, song. And Limelight. Uh, I was saying, we've been talking, uh, well, just uh, while, the, while the record's been playing, we've been talking about the songs and in the studio here and... Uh, I was saying how they they grab time and they they hang like portraits those songs and they remind me of times past and and yet they're so fresh in today's music as well. It's just something that's timeless, uh, which, is, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, so I wanted to thank Rush and in particular Neil Pert. Neil, thank you for all you've given. Uh, so far, thank you for all the uh, insights and all the wonderful things that you've played so that people, guys like me and a lot of other drummers can just listen and just go, holy shit, <laughs> you know, and just go, wow, you know. So I really enjoyed the fact that we played Rush today and featured Neil Peart. So I think that was marvellous. Um, before we move on for our final set, um, I find myself getting into trouble again this week in the press. <laughs> And, uh, man, I can't just can't uh, seem to say the right thing without getting slaughtered by, by um, some of our friends in the press. It's, uh, it's quite, quite amazing. I did a nice interview with a friend of mine, Eddie Trunk, as you know, this week. And, uh, of course, some of the content, contents of the interview have been taken out and kind of out of context as well. And they've been, they're making the headlines right now. And uh, NME, I believe, in Great Britain. And uh, I think there was one in... Um, classic rock as well uh, that I called uh, the album Black Sabbath's album 13 uh, complete complete shit or something like that you know and it's just like man man what's you know it's like woo let me get a couple of things straight here I really really love those guys um, I am so passionate in my love for them um, they are fantastic musicians uh, I've never faulted their musicianship ever. I play with these guys since I was a teenager. Um, I just I I love them. We I'm in a dispute with them, and um, I heard. Let's go back to thirteen for a second, so I can make it clear for the record. I heard about twenty twenty four bars of one track, one track on thirteen, and I listened to it, and I just didn't like it at all. I just didn't like it. And I have that right not to like it. Uh, recently at the Ivan Ovello Awards, where I was with Tony and Giza, Giza mentioned to me that he'd bought or he downloaded my new CD, which was um, A Cannibal Beast. And I said, well, what do you think of the album? And he said, I love it musically. He said, but I can't stand it vocally. Terry, Terry just so happens that Giza doesn't like my singing. He has that right. He has that right not to like it. But I'm fucked if the press is going to slam me up the wall or, or come out with some pretentious bullshit about, about, you know, using headlines that are completely, out, you know, it's just like, what the fuck is all that about, you know? You know, it's, I'm just saying it from, from my heart. If you're listening out there, hey, Get a clue, you know. I, I I really I really dig these people that I'm talking about, you know. And uh, and I listen to Twenty Four Bars. I haven't heard the rest of the album Thirteen. I haven't heard it. 
and I never listened to it. One of the reasons I didn't want to listen to it was because I felt it would be quite painful to listen to, not musically, but emotionally. It's quite painful to listen to something that you wanted to be a part of but were unable to be a part of because I'm fighting for some principles in my life, and that includes the way that I interact with those three guys, Black Sabbath. Just it's about principles, folks. That's that's all it is, okay? So when these when these big headlines come out like that, then uh, ooh, man, f- talk about fanning the flames. You know, let's get you know, let's what what I man. Anyway, just for the record, uh, I love Tony, love Giza, and I love Ozzy Osbourne, and they are great musicians. So I'm letting all the Aussie fans know that as well. You know, it's just like. Wow. All right, I've said my piece. Thanks, thanks for those of you who are still listening or if you turned off. And, and, and God bless the press. <laughs> um, because we need you guys as well. I'm having a blast today because I'm playing, listening to guys that I, I really dig and listening to bands that I love. So, um, Okay, Mike, thanks a lot for today. Thank you. Good show. Yeah, thanks. Had I think, some fun. Yeah, we've had some fun today. We got some. It's been pretty good, I think. I want to go over. Um, want to go over what we played. Um, we got some holy shits in there as well. We got some holy shits. Wow, fuck, and everything else. <laughs> we got. We got it quite a lot achieved. <laughs> um, uh, I want to say goodbye to uh, to you, Mike. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I want to say thanks to Lisa. Thanks, Jones. Uh, it's now a year since Jones passed away, but we. Uh, all love him and we miss him dearly here, that's for sure. I want to do a shout out to Monty. Hope you're well, Mont. I want to do a shout out to the UK, Europe. Uh, hi, kids. Uh, Walter's on the East Coast right now, so I just want to do a shout out to Walt. Uh, I want to do a shout out to our wonderful guitar player in BWB, none other than Keith Lynch. It's his birthday today. So I want to do a shout out to Keith and wish him a very, very happy birthday. And it just so happens that on the same day, uh, one of my uh, production guys, uh, it was Gene Lamute. Gene was with us in, in Europe when we went to Europe in May recently. And we went there to London to have to take the uh, Ivan Novello Award with uh, Tony and Giza. And Gene was there. So it's Gene's birthday as well. So I think Gene's in the Philippines right now. Happy birthday, Gene. Uh, love you, man, and uh, wish you all the best, of course. I um, want to thank everyone that's listening and ask you to stay safe, stay strong. And please, be, please take care of yourselves. Um, uh, we love you here at uh, Rock 50 and uh, actually think the world of you. You're all really, really special and important. Uh, and all your opinions are as well. <laughs> and that's the truth. 